okay. So it's been a while since I've uh, made an update video on the cylinder off project. I think it's been a, a busy holiday season around here for me. I sell goofy LED stuff uh, on my Etsy store. And uh, anyway, so the, the holiday season, as far as that goes, has been over for me for you know, maybe a couple weeks at this point. And uh, <laughs> thankfully, and I've been able to catch up on, on uh, design work on the cylinder off project. So I want to show off in this video some uh, some of the neat stuff that's different, you know, hardware wise and software wise. I actually, it's, uh, I called it version two, it's different enough. And uh, I'm just gonna show off what it can do. I'm gonna run through a full demo and engrave a bunny on this thing for my daughter. Here we go. Okay, so step one to making a engraved cup is to get yourself some imagery. I've got some, a bunny here and some words, let's see. I'm going to show you where I got this. I googled bunny and I've a uh, bunny with the keyword deviant art and I found this person here. I am not going to sell this artwork. I'm going to keep it for myself and I'm going to give this person on video credit. It's that guy right there. He made the art. I'm going to borrow it just for this cup for home use. Thank you. And similar for you go to fontspace.com and I went and I just found one I liked by this person here. And I'm going to use it just for this. And I went, I put them into Microsoft PowerPoint and click the remove background button. And in here you can, you know, you can do like, it's just really powerful. You can do like that kind of stuff. And anyway, cleaned it up from there. I went to paint, laid it out, got myself an image, save it as uh, a PNG, a, a dot JPEG, you know, JPEG would have worked too. So save that, and now I'm going to open up my depixelizer. So this is the Cylindra package. This is exactly what it looks like when you unzip it. Cylindra depixelizer is the first one. If you can open any of them, because as you can switch between them with the buttons at the top here, and it's just going to open it right up. So the original image is on the right, and the preview of the SVG that this will create is on the left. So it imports a PNG and it exports a vector in an SVG. And I can I can use the scroll here to kind of change it. I'm going to change, I want the export size to be 130 millimeters tall physically on my bottle because it's a big bottle. It's going to be a big picture. My stroke width down here, it's 0.5 at default. Here we go. I'm going to reduce it to 0.2 millimeters because that's my engraving line width. That's whenever I take my engraver, I scrape it on the bottle. It's exactly 0.2 millimeters wide. And let's see, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. Let's see, oh yeah, does he need a brown nose? I don't know, this is some artistic uh, stuff, you know, stuff here. But anyway, I click export and it auto pops up, you know, what it, uh, the interpretation. If you zoom in, you can see that these are little stroke lines. That's what it's producing. And then a little uh, the blue words here, just kind of recording what the settings were. Man, I think I, uh, I think I hit the nail on the head with that one. One, one and done. In any case, let's see, I had that. All right, so I took a break there for a minute to eat dinner and uh, put on a hoodie. So let's get back to it. I just opened Job Creator. This is exactly what it looks like right when you open it. And it's got uh, a little box in the middle. So it's, it automatically is opening the bunny file we just made. But, I, but the system detected that it's over a million or it's, all, it's over a megabyte. So it loaded a bounding box instead of the, the full preview. So I open the help menu and show the full preview. You can see the bunny file on the cup. But it takes a long time to render because at 0.2 millimeter strokes, this this is not rendering a cheapened SVG. This is rendering the whole thing. There's like a million strokes on screen. It's just not conducive to working with because it's so laggy at that size. So put it back to bounding box and you're good to go. I guess just for a quick rundown, what you're looking at here, the white space is the full surface of the bottle unwrapped. The blue space is just the front of the bottle, the portion that you can see. And then, let's see, the little black box is the object on the bottle. I can put it wherever I want. And let's see, I'm going to pick cup tool dimensions. This is another new feature that I can, uh, I can do. I can load a profile so I don't have to be typing those in every time. 
think in this case I have done I had a few of these bottles so it's cut metal tall nieces because I made them as gifts it's loading the dimensions I'm not gonna mess with the other stuff right now but you know you can change it for whatever your cup size is and your tool and um, actually before I do this since I'm showing off features in this video I'm gonna load SVG I'm gonna load uh, made in Oregon is it made in Oregon too Made in Oregon. Let's try to see that one. Yeah, that's it. So this is a different type of SVG. This is, and it comes out really small. Let me make it bigger. I get more options over here first. Notice that. Make sure my yeah, camera's a little in. This is an SVG I made in Inkscape. So it's fundamentally different. It's a smaller file size, and it actually loads it so you can see it. And you notice. Let's see, I'm going to actually open that SVG, by the way. Is this it here? Yeah, so that's what that's what it looks like. And it's rendering it like this. And you say, why is that? Because this, you have more options with this type of SVG. So you can set it to be multicolor. You can set it to be fill. Let's see, fill with no multicolor or fill and multicolor. Or you can also add an additional black outline when you're done. So... This gives you, this is like a stock SVG if you're buying an SVG off Etsy or just like you find one somewhere, the, the regular type, you get these extra options to do things with. Um, I am going to see, exit, I'm going to put my bunny file back in there. There's the, I saved it. I put it over here. Two. You, you know what? I'll just do it. I'll do it the way that you would do it. Not, oopsie, not this way. So just go to creation mode. It always loads the last thing that you used, but I went in there and I deleted the thing we were looking at. So I want to load the bunny file. That's where I had saved it. All right, bunny. All right, now I said it was 130 millimeters tall. See the bottom of it. I want the bottom. This is my cup and ruler. If I say I want the bottom to be about 30 millimeters up and the top to be 160 or so, let's see. I click on the screen. It's telling me where I'm clicking, what the dimensions of this bounding box are. So I think it's defaulting. Well, it defaults automatically to center your image in the usable area, and I like where it's come out to be. So I'm going to hit save job. And let's see, it also doesn't matter what size the preview is. Whenever I'm zooming, uh, it won't affect the job. But that should take that should take a minute because there's a lot of uh, information it's going over. Here we go. And then it opens up the preview. Like this in a separate window. There's a viewer just for viewing these types of files. Let's see. I can. It looks good to me. So the rectangle, the white is is lifted motion. That's not drawn. It's not engraved. And it starts out by drawing a bounding box. That's new. I also have this feature for heat map, which is cool. So you can. It starts out with red. It shows you its path, and then it turns blue gradually, uh, just for visualization purposes. But this is already optimized. This is already the motion has already been optimized to minimize the amount of white wasted motion space. Uh, and then if I hit details, you can see this file. You can open up this version of the file. Uh, in, in I'm using Google Chrome. You can use any uh, internet browser to look at that kind of stuff. So yes, it's beautiful. Let's do it. I'm gonna let's see. I'm gonna. I'll just minimize that. I don't need it. It's not in the way. Back to this program. I'm going to go to run mode now. Switch over to run mode. And whenever I had hit save, it was saved. It was converting that SVG file into a G-code embedded SVG file, which I call, in the context of this program, I call it a job.svg file. And you don't need to view those files because I wanted to make it easy. I wanted to make it so as soon as you complete one task, you open the next tab. It, it has what you need already. But if you go into this system folder, you can see those files that it's saving. It's, it, just, it just renames them and, and overwrites them every time. It's temp.something, whatever it is that you're working on. 
uh, just so you're aware. That's also where it saves. Uh, I'll show you some other goodies in here. Some of the the uh, the cup tool settings. It saves those as text files, and it saves log job logs for the job creator and run mode. So that white space on screen, uh, everything it posts there, it posts here after a session, and then your next session overwrites it. So if you're like ever curious what you did or if something went wrong for any reason, it's just like for troubleshooting, that's a nice to have as well. So we've got run mode. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause it. I'm going to adjust my camera so you can see the machine instead of me. Okay, so you got a bird's eye view of the cylindra with the water cooling engraving upgrade. So I'm going to go ahead and put my bottle in. There you go. Tighten the good amount. Lock it in. Do this to cinch the base. I'm gonna make sure I'm actually centered on the centered on there. I want to push it on really hard. Yeah, that's good. And then that there. Just need to focus. Getting that in straight. Looks good. All right, so what I've got here is a, is a pie pan of water. The pie pan's a little off-putting. I've got a, a design for a thermal-formed part that's going to look a lot nicer, but you know what? It actually works really well. So I've got a tube and a fountain pump with magnets on here. Boom. So we got rid of the vacuum system for engraving. It's a little noisy, but you put this thing on, and uh, it keeps the, the bit cool. I've got it pointing right at the tip. Just, just a little bit off screen there, and uh, yeah, it just works well. It increases the speed that we can operate at, and it makes it quieter. You know, you can run this thing indoors, in an, um, uh, obviously, but like in an apartment without bugging your neighbor because it's not so noisy. You know, that's a really unique thing about it. So let's go back to the software. I'm going to let's see what I was going to show you here. <clears throat> yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and run it. I'm going to let it run, and then maybe I can speed up that portion of the video uh, for like a time lapse effect. So I've got it set. This goes between settings one and five. I'm going to leave it at three. Let's see. Update speed. Drawing speed, uh, if, I was a, if it was a marker, I'd use 50. If I was engraving glass, I'd use something with water. I'd probably use like a speed of 10. And since I'm doing, this is like an aluminum bottle, I'm going to do 30 millimeters per second at a uh, dermal speed of 3. Hit that. Just hit that and make sure. Yep, the tip of the Dremel is lined up with the tips of these of these little holders here. And by the way, I've got a little, this is a new part too, a little shield here, a little splash guard just for uh, idiot proofing it while I'm hauling this thing around. But, it says insert this tool. You can see this thing is capable of really fast motion whenever it's not engraving, right? That saves a lot of time. So I'm going to let it run. Estimating it's going to take an hour. I'm going to let it run and come back.
All right, so that took a good half an hour uh, total. So that was uh, was quite a bit less than what my estimate was accounting for. So that's uh, that's a good thing. Let's take this off. Let's unlock it. Screw it up. Oh, and I'll go back to the software and unlock the unlock the axis. Yeah. Kill the motors, pull it off. So, yeah, that's all there is to it. This is, um, I think, the only thing, the only machine out there that could that uh, could do what this is doing at this cost level. It's you know, like it's competing with laser engraving, which is uh, this is an order of magnitude less expensive. Uh, to start, it's safer, and uh, it looks fantastic. And it's oh, and it's it's a lot easier as well. It's like you saw the software. There's just a lot. You know, it's low complexity. So I'm really happy with, with how it turned out. I am selling kits on how to make these. You can make them yourself. We have some um, assembled kits and stuff like that for you. Here's another one. I'm just showing off. I don't think I had this on screen earlier. And uh, I'm gonna call it uh, good for this video. Thanks for watching.